Hey everybody, this is Dennis and glad to have you back with me. Today we're going to do a conversion on a Fulton MX991 flashlight. Now the Fulton MX991, uh, I think I actually was issued this in about 1985 and throughout my military career it served me uh, very well. And uh, the cool thing about it is you know that the, uh, the crook neck type flashlight which was really handy when you had it attached to your load carrying uh, suspenders you could use it to read a map without having your you know with having your hands free which is pretty cool now one thing that I've already done to this flashlight was that I switched out the old PR6 bulb here that you see it's a standard incandescent flashlight bulb I've already switched that out with a, um, a night eyes LED upgrade and uh, this one is 74 lumens of output. I think it cost me somewhere around $10. I think I got it on eBay. But uh, the, uh, the neat thing about this is that this LED upgrade, unlike some incandescent flashlights, uh, flashlight bulbs like the PR6, uh, which might tend to be more sensitive to voltage, this has a very wide voltage range because it says that it fits most D and C cell flashlights, of which this is a D cell flashlight, and it operates two to six cell flashlights. So if you do the math on it, uh, these, the way this is set up, when you put the flashlight batteries in here, they're in, um, they're in series. And uh, as we know from our um, electrical studies, when you do that with batteries and you wire them in series, it adds the voltage up as you go. And, uh, but the, uh, even though the voltage increases, the milliamp hour, the discharge rate of the battery remains the same of what it is for a single cell. And so that means that if this was, uh, would operate from two to six cells, that means that using the standard alkaline battery, that would be in the range of anywhere from three volts up to nine volts, which is, you know, six times one and a half is nine volts. So the thought came to me, uh, since that, that LED bulb has such a high range of voltages, that I could also do, in addition to changing it over to LED, I could also switch it over to a lithium ion battery. And so my thought turned to the, to the really the most predominant lithium ion rechargeable cell out there, and that's the 18650. The problem with the 18650 is that if you put two in here, it, they're too long. And, and they won't fit in that space that's inside of the flashlight. And so then my thought turned to the 14500, of which I have a 14500 cell here. And they're roughly the same form factor as a, uh, as a AAA battery, a standard AAA battery. The difference with this one, it's an Orptronic 14500 battery. Um, the label on it says 840 milliamp hours. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, it's a little bit longer than a standard AAA alkaline cell or nickel metal hydride cell. And uh, the reason why is because it has some circuitry here in the end of it that helps it, um, it prevents it from being overcharged or undercharged. Overcharging is bad and undercharging uh, and, and losing the battery because you can't recover it because it, uh, the, the, um, the, battery, the amount of power that's stored in the battery drops below a certain threshold. Many times it can't be recovered. And so, um, you know, these would both fit in terms of just the length inside of here. But then you have to have some sort of a carrier to hold it in. The other factor to consider is that these batteries are, you know, they're, it says that typically they run at 3.7 volts. Uh, when I took mine off the charger, they were at actually 4.2 volts. And uh, a quick note about the Orbtronic is that I've purchased five of these Orbtronic 14500 batteries so far. And their actual measured uh, milliamp hour storage has ranged anywhere from 812 up to 854 uh, milliamp hours, which is, they, they advertise, if you read the fine print on it, it says that they won't be less than 800, but 840 is the the typical and the target for it. 
And, and that's held up to be true. I've never had one that was less than 800 milliamp hours of capacity and some, as I said, up to 854. And so as a carrier for this battery, uh, I looked on eBay and I actually looked, had to look kind of hard and I found these and, and it holds two cells inside of it. Uh, I got these from an eBay dealer that you can find these on eBay from several different dealers. I got it from one that was in China, so it took uh, about two weeks for it to actually get here uh, by standard China Post shipping uh, through the U.S. Postal Service uh, is the handoff agent there. And it, as I had hoped, it not only fits uh, the AA cells, standard AA cells, but it also fits the Orbtronic. These are, these are still short enough that they'll fit inside of this carrier. And so I can put two in each one, which uh, you note that there's space for two cells in there. And then close it up and I have a nice little D cell sized um, battery holder. Now, what's weird about these is, you know, we talked about parallel versus series. These are actually two batteries in parallel. And so this battery pack has a cumulative voltage that mirrors the voltage of the batteries inside. So they're rated at 3.7 volts. You know, I took them off the charger at 4.21 volts. But they are um, carry the 4.21 volts, but they double or, or they basically add up the amp hour capacity that's in these. So let's say they were at eight, 840 milliamp hours each then the total here would be 1,680 milliamp hours for this battery pack. And so I've got two of them here. Let me put some, uh, some more cells in this other one. And in theory, uh, when I put these two together, I should have, let's say that they actually are at the 4.21 volts that I measured. Cumulatively, the two battery packs put into series with one another like this, they're gonna carry uh, about 8.4 volts total, which is within what Night Eyes says that they can handle in terms of the, the voltage. So let's give it a whirl, let's try. I haven't done this yet, so uh, we're gonna see if this works. I have a lot of confidence about it though. Hopefully we don't burn out the cell, but we are sure gonna see. All right, let's give it a test. Okay, here's the proof. Hey, how about that? It works and it's nice and bright. Um, can't really tell that it's any different than when I used it with a, a standard D cell or, um, or with any other type of battery in there, as long as it's in that range. Because you have to understand too that even at a higher voltage, it maybe is, well, it is drawing less current, okay? And so, some folks might wonder, why the heck would you want to put lithium ion cells in here? Well, uh, lithium ion cells are lighter weight. Now, if you look at the milliamp hour capacity, you say 1680 milliamp hours, that's not, that's not much because like a standard D cell, you know, they'll run, gosh, 15,000 milliamp hours. That's a lot of a milliamp hours. Keep in mind though, that that's at 1.5 volts. Uh, if you've got a, a cell that's a nickel metal hydride D cell, I've seen those up running around 10,000 milliamp hours, but that's at 1.2 volts, okay? So 1.5 volts for alkaline, 1.2 volt, volts for nickel metal hydride, but these running at 3.7 volts, if they are at 3.7, sometimes even at 4.2 volts, as I had measured, times say 840 milliamp hours times two for each of those cells in there. And then you add the other one, uh, well, you don't add the other one because that the two packs are, in, are now in series. You end up with uh, 1680 milliamp hours times the voltage. And that gives you the watt hours, which is really the total stored capacity. If you can vary the, uh, the current and LEDs are really cool in that they accept a wide range of voltages, usually wide range of voltages, and can accept a, a wide range of currents as well. So you actually get some very good life out of this 
as well as the the nice storage capability no worries about le leaking batteries of course there are the standard hazards that come with lithium-ion batteries but I think this is a very nice upgrade not only moving it to LED but also making it a lithium-ion flashlight not bad for a battery for a flashlight that was given to me in 1985 it's a cheapie that's for sure you can still get them today uh, you know bargain basement prices but it has been very durable and lasted me very well and it will continue to do so thanks for joining me and I hope you learned something bye